voting has come back to haunt Beth Keithley. This is a hearing taking place on November 17, 2008. Okay, let's go on the record. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you give in these proceedings and the statements in your application will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Did you realize that if you provide false information by claiming you're a citizen, that you could be deported? You're going to get a chance to tell the whole story, so, so just relax. Is this your signature in the right-hand box? If you don't understand, you can say, I don't understand. I don't understand. You're you're right. Right. Were you the one who checked off the boxes Objection. that you're a citizen, that you're a citizen of the United the States? Answer. How in the world did this happen? All she can be accused of is being ignorant, being innocent, and being ensnared. And I don't think that we are just left to throwing up our arms and saying that there is nothing that we can do. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure today. I'm joined by the director and writer of a wonderful film we saw at Tribeca yesterday called The Courtroom. I have director Lee Sunday Evans and writer Ariane Moyed. Hey, William. Hey, Hi. guys. Hey, guys. Just wanted to, I'm, I'm really happy to be able to talk to you about this movie because I'm not going to lie to you. When I watched it at first, I was like, well, this is interesting. This is, this is peculiar. And then as I got going, I'm like, this is what's right. This is what makes sense. And as, as I was watching the movie, I started to feel for uh, all of the characters and, and I, I loved where this thing went and it's based on real courtroom documentation. Is that correct? Yeah. All of the words of the entirety of this, of this, the movie of the courtroom are words from, um, from transcripts. Correct. They're, they're not written by anybody. And how do you go about putting that together as a writer? Basically, what happened was I when I when we found this case the, that Richard Haynes, who's the lawyer that handed it to me um, years ago, I I and Lee and the company we kind of like look at all this these these this dense material and found early on for me at least that there was a real human story here. I'm an immigrant from Iran. Um, my family has a hard time speaking English to this day. And so I've known it um, on a very granular level and and reading the transcripts of lines like, um, do you need a tissue come out of nowhere really kind of impact me in a very personal way because I'm realizing that Elizabeth Keithley at this moment is having like a nervous breakdown. She's really losing her shit right now. Um, and 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 those moments to me really are a human story and and i just followed this human story um and without giving anything away like the the story that i think is really i hope hopefully you know what we've done is make it resonate with a lot of people on what immigrants are going through and what lawyers are going through and what um the whole system looks like I think you did that because I, I kept thinking about my dad, who's from Central America, and I kept thinking mm. if he had to go through this, he probably would have been in the same boat as Elizabeth when it came to not necessarily needing a translator, but still not getting quite the nuances of all the language that's being used. And I, I just saw him up there when I was watching the movie, mm. and I thought to myself, that is not a position I would want anybody to be in. And, no. and for the reasons that are given, do you know what I mean? And, and Lee, you had to put this whole thing together, and I think you did a wonderful job. So I wanted to ask you a couple of things about that. First and foremost, how did you put something like this together and make it so personal and so uh, eye-opening for the audiences? Oh, gosh. Well, thank you so much for taking time to watch the film. And, you know, it was a 
really incredible experience to have done the play so many times. I think we had probably done 25 performances or something of it. And we'd kind of had this process because it's a new piece. This is common in the theater. You perform it, you make changes, you, you rehearse it again, you do it in front of a different audience, you learn other things, you decide to emphasize a different part of the story. You, you know, you kind of like learn over the course of doing that many performances, like how to chart the overall journey of the story. And most of the actors in the film were part of that theater production. And so we just like went into what was an extremely like short film shoot with this deep history where these actors had lived with this story for such a long time. And they lived with these roles and they lived with the complexity of this language. And so honestly, you know, I was just like in this really deep dialogue with these really brilliant actors. And like that was a lot of what we were doing. I also, I really had an amazing collaboration with the DP who is Daisy Zhao, who was like a total, total brilliant genius. And doing the prep work of like leading up to filming and, and thinking that through with her and really like interrogating like where, how should the camera be dancing through this courtroom stuff with these actors? How can we, you know, the danger with courtroom scenes is always that you're going to kind of be in this like tennis match problem um, of just going back and forth and how to kind of, um, get really creative and really create kind of like the dynamic storytelling with the camera around that was also I think like a really incredible collaboration with Daisy to to think about that yeah I think that that uh, what you're saying completely worked too I think it, we were it works as a fly on the wall experiencing everything as the as the characters do that's actually I'm glad you brought up the characters and the people portraying the roles because there was a uh, one thing I wanted to bring up to you, and it was uh, Linda Powell's character, which is Richard Hannes. It's actually based on a man, a male character, but you went ahead and, and, and had Linda Powell there. What, what goes into that? What, what happened there? And uh, why is she amazing in, as it? <laughs> I'll just say briefly that, you know, it was really two reasons. The first reason was that we wanted to just find, like Ari and I were trying to find these like little ways that we could keep the audience remembering that this is a transcript and that nothing has been changed. Um, and so the little moments of tension around like Mr. Heinous, Richard, you know, and, and you kind of see this like incredible woman playing that role, those little moments of tension, we want to kind of like jog the audience to remember that what they're watching is a transcript and it has not been changed. So that's like one kind of like conceptual story reason. And the second is, you know, that Ari and I were working on these transcripts and they're emotional, they're very fraught, they're very dramatic, but they're also really dense and they're really technically complicated, like to be able to embody the lawyer who is like mm. charting that, um, the argument in the story. I just, I think we thought of Linda as someone who we thought would do an incredible job with that. So it was kind of a combination of those two things that made it feel like it was the right choice. Oh, it definitely worked because I was I was sitting there watching the movie and all of a sudden I hear Mr. Hannes and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. That doesn't okay. And then I kept watching and watching and it kept me on my toes the whole time. And I and I and I liked that. And I, and also I, I love Kristen Bill in the way that she's amazing in performance. Her, uh, so her performance, performance is so you know, that whole section talk about another like, you know, you need an incredible actor that can come in, that can portray this so realistically but really also giving out that this is a life and death situation you know what i mean while not trying to do too much i mean you know as again as you might know with your dad um it's like those moments come really fast and furious and they're really tricky and they're really heartbreaking you know and 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 you and she comes in and so gets it to a t of what that moment looks like um and still, and and the transcripts of of uh, um, Elizabeth Keithley saying, "I'm sorry," you know how many times she says, "I'm so sorry, Your Honor. I'm so sorry." That like we have to wait for her mm. meltdown. It's like it's just powerful to me. It's like she's now apologizing to the judge for having a real life. I'm gonna get deported feeling, you know, like. So I, I think I, you need an actor that can do that. And, and here, Kristen Villanueva, enter Kristen Villanueva. She walked that line between, that, that you have to walk for this between 
getting getting it right and then she could have easily gone into folly or overacting by accident but she nailed it she stayed right on that line and kept me as an audience member enthralled and a lot of that again it goes comes from the way you guys put the script together her performance and then also lee like you mentioned the way you put the camera on them, mm. i think also really sort of built that tension as she's saying i'm sorry or as she's breaking down we we get a quick glimpse of her and then the camera goes to uh, michael uh, chernis's character and we see him like oh god she's about to you can see his him awaiting the collapse mm. he's like watching the house of cards fall and he knows they're about to but he doesn't want them to because that's his wife up there yeah. I think it's a really, really interesting uh, framing that you put together, Lee, and I really want to commend you on that because I thought it was really, really well done. And obviously, Ari, your words were, uh, the words that you put together from these transcripts really hit home for, like I said, anybody who's a child of an immigrant, I think that yeah. they really hit home. Now, we, we talked about your film a little bit. I, I want to talk about you guys a little bit because, Ari, I, I looked at your filmography and you've done a bunch of different stuff. You've been in a, everything, basically. And Lee, this is your directorial debut, correct? Yeah. Yeah. How does it feel to have your directorial debut go straight to some, something as big as Tribeca? Oh, my gosh. It's like a total honor and really, really like um, it's like an amazing experience to to make a film and have the opportunity to make a film. And, you know, Arian does have such extensive experience in so many as a writer and a director and an actor. And I really like learned so much from collaborating with him on this and um really grateful to be like in the company of all the really like astounding films that are that are in Tribeca yeah I was gonna say there's a lot of really good stuff playing here and yours is definitely really good all right obviously this isn't your first rodeo doing anything you wrote a mini series that came out a few years ago uh and that you also directed but this is uh your first time doing a feature right this is my first feature yeah yeah, yeah, I noticed that. I was like, man, he's done a lot of stuff, but he's never written a feature. And this is the first yeah, time I get to talk true. to him about it. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny that you even say that it's a feature. It's like, to me, the story is like always been, because with the play version, it was, you know, I still think it was just a play in my mind because it's like the, where it started. But I'm glad that you feel that it's a feature because it is a feature. It is, you know, it's a feature film that we are putting out there that is really kind of, I don't know, talking about things that we want to talk about. Yeah, and I, 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 I've seen a lot of your other work, even though I didn't know you were in it. And it's really interesting that you, you, you've you done so much stuff and, and being a, an actor of Middle Eastern descent, you guys usually get typecast a lot. Do you find that that's a difficult thing to, to yeah. overcome? Wow, timing. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's been almost 20 years of saying no to these types of characters and these types of roles. And there's a reason why, you know, in my 20s I didn't have any film or tv career because there was no I would, I would there was no there was no roles written um so yeah I mean it's been tough and it continues to be tough and 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 what it means to represent a, a, a whole community that doesn't have a lot of people at the top that are helping guide them to figure out you know how to tell these stories you know uh, I have the I have the unbelievable fortune right now of being in Miss Marvel um, but the team of people that have created Miss Marvel, the first um, Muslim Pakistani superhero, um, it is a it, the whole room is full of amazing voices, and um, and so the struggle is still there because we don't have that many rooms. We have one Miss Marvel room, but I don't know that many other rooms that are like that. And so, yeah, it's it's tough. I, I love that you you're talking about that because this festival seems to bathe in diversity every year when I come to Tribeca I see films about my people like myself Latinos and I see people from other walks of life and I get to see mm. their stories put up on the screen last year I saw some great Asian films mainly coming out of uh, Indian directors and, and mm. Indian storytelling and it, mm. it all happens and, and here we get a, a fil uh, the story of a Filipino woman which is something I'm familiar with. We have a huge Filipina um, conglomeration here in Las Vegas where I live. Mm. Um, we have a huge, and so I see a lot of the, my friends' moms and my friends' aunts in that character mm. when she's out there, do, when Elizabeth is on you know, mm. trial. I see them on there and I see them saddened and I see them angry and I see them disappointed at the system that's failed them. And I love that this festival tends to 
highlight those things. And I, I want to thank you guys for putting together a story about that I, I would have never gotten to experience without your guys' hard work. And, and I always love seeing that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate you like engaging with the film so deeply. Of course. And I always like to ask two fun questions before I let my guests go. And so I'll ask you guys these fun questions. And the first one is, uh, who do you guys look at as inspirations for the work that you do? Wow, so many people. Um, yeah. I don't know, we just got to, um, Arian made this incredible connection with Chris Smalls from the Amazon Labor Union. And we got to have this amazing event with him a couple of weeks ago that Arian kind of facilitated and set up. And I have to say that was one of the most inspiring like days. And I knew he would, I knew he was inspiring, but then actually being with him and talking with him was like kind of uh, even more, uh, even more kind of galvanizing than I anticipated. Yeah, I, I'm going to say that same. I'm going to say the same thing about Chris. I think Chris, what he has done, I mean, it's, 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 it's gets me emotional because it's just, it's pretty simple. What he has done is actually simple. It's like, I'm going to talk to you guys like, and, 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 and tell you guys that we deserve better than this. We should be getting, they're making it. He's going to the moon. He's going yeah. to the moon. And so I think that is a big inspiration. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Okay. That's a great answer. And we, <laughs> I've, I've heard that about Chris Smalls before from other people yeah. who've worked with him. And so I've heard that. And so I love to, that you guys are reiterating that. And so the second fun question I always like to ask, it really tells me a lot about you guys, especially in the, in the cinematic uh, realm is if you had to pick two movies that you could only watch for the rest of your life, what two movies would you pick and why? Oh God. It's the hardest God. question you're going to get asked all day. Cause it's, it's, there are, because the problem is, <laughs> yep. the problem is, is that, is that if you pick like a serious, like you also need like a comedy in there. You need some, yeah. some jokes or otherwise, you know, a lot of Citizen Kane will make you crazy. And yes. at the end of it, Orson Welles, who knows, possible, might have lost it at the end. <laughs> so I don't know, Lee, geez. I'm going to go with, I just recommended this to my cousin who um, her family has a small movie theater in the small town in Turkey where she's from. And I was um, talking about Cinema Paradiso. Um, oh. So I'm going to say that movie and I'm going to reprise Singing in the Rain, which is my answer to another question. But that'll be my comedy because I could watch Make Them Laugh and like all oh, yeah. fun, crazy, silly numbers in that um, over and over and over. That's, yeah. Those are great picks. Great picks. I love singing in the Ram. I'm a big musical guy. So I love that answer. I still got to see what Ari's got in the tank here. Singing in the Rain is very good. And I, and I watch that movie often. And I love it. I think I would do It's a Wonderful Life. I think I would do It's a Wonderful Life. And then I think I would, I don't know, the second one's tricky. I think I'm like leaning towards like a like a Shawshank. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I always, uh, one of my picks is actually also a, a Frank Capra film. I would pick uh, oh. It Happened One Night. Is one oh, I love that movie. Yeah. That's yeah. another movie. Someone just asked us what movie that we would remake. Was that the question? It, it, it Could Happen One Night would also be another movie that would be really fun to remake. That's a hard one to remake though. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's really hard because one of the but best things thing you wouldn't even remake it you'd have to like redo it you'd have to yeah. like it'd be inspired by that's what it has yeah. to be inspired well, by. and you know what's funny is i think there's a lot of movies inspired by them they're called romantic comedies because it basically invented the genre yeah it's you know what i mean it's the yeah and the other one I, pick, I usually pick would be internal sunshine of the spotless mind because i like to be depressed yeah. too i just showed my kids that yeah and they're 13 and 11 at the end of the movie when they come to the hallway, yeah, that hallway scene, you could see both of my girls were like, "Oh my god, they're still gonna do it!" <laughs> you know, it was just like it's so, it's so that movie works so well. What I love it is it tells you a so lot. Well. The ending tells you a lot about you as a person and how you, if you believe in love or not. If you're pessimistic mm -hmm. and like the ending, 
then you're you, you probably hate love. If you're if you love the ending and you love that they're together and you love that you're an optimist in love and it tells you a lot about yourself. And that's why I love that movie so much. And that's I see cool. new things every time. I've seen it like 40 times. I see new things every time I watch the movie. And so that's, I love that pick. All right, so I'm gonna I have to wrap it up here. So I'm gonna give you guys elevator pitch for this movie. Give me why people need to watch the courtroom, what and what they can expect when they do. Um, it's a story about a woman who is grappling with the hardest, hardest moments of her life in a deportation proceeding. And I think you want to watch it to have this really unusual experience of getting to live through what that would be like and getting to um, hopefully carry Elizabeth Keithley's story with you kind of like throughout your life as an as an experience that will kind of shape your understanding of the way immigration works in this country i like that all right, all right I do too. yeah i i just you know a bunch of artists got together over a period of time and really tried to tackle one of the big issues in our country and doing it with heart and with with intellect and you know with excellence and the quorum really kind of like makes you pinpoint what it must feel like to be an immigrant in the immigration court system and hopefully that might change your mind of what immigrants are and, and are doing i love that and i would just say that you should see the movie because it's one that is full of exactly what you said it's full of heart it's smart it doesn't talk down to the audience and it will make you feel uh, like you've just made a friend in, in, in Elizabeth and her family no. and Richard Hannes, you know, because you want so badly for them to succeed. Uh, and I think that's the main reason to check out this movie. And you guys should check out The, the Courtroom, which just debuted at Tribeca whenever it is released. Hopefully we'll see it in the, uh, you know, near future. Really want to thank you, Ari. Really want to thank you, Lee, for joining me and having, you know, spent a little bit of your day with me. And, and I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Thank, Thank you so man. much. Same. Have a great day, guys. You too, man.